Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Good morning and welcome to episode two of Take Action in Rockingham. I'm Mike Smith and this is Marty Gallagher. We're in our own, we're in our undisclosed secret location today. Yes, we're down in the <laughs> in the planning bunker here at the at Take Action Rockingham. Uh, we've just, it's been a week, we've had some difficulty with uh, technical issues and getting schedules together and we're just, we're trying to get this show out so that you guys can be up to date. Perfect. So what happened this morning, or not this morning, but this week? This week, um, the Building Redevelopment Task Force met. Uh -huh. um, they met on Monday night. The uh, meetings are going to be likely in the same place, which was the upper level of the Rockingham Library. Um, there was about 14 people that came. Mm -hmm. um, it was a nice mix of, of, the, of the community. Right. Um, and one of, Ray, Ray Masuko is the, is the leader, the, the chair. And he had everyone go around and kind of tell a little bit about themselves, what they do, and kind of why they're there, which is important for other community members to know. Um, he provided a list of the buildings that, um, you know, are kind of being considered yeah, redevelopment. Yeah, right. And, some, and some potential the big, redevelopment yeah, the projects. Big, you know, the big ones, I think yeah, everybody yeah, knows. Yeah. And so there's a little chatter about that list and, and what was going to happen. Um, but it was really just kind of a getting, getting our, getting yeah. To know and it one really, another. well, to me, it really pointed out how how difficult this task is going to mm -hmm. be. It's not. It's this isn't a like go in and just yeah. do it. There's a lot of different pe players. There's I, he, the other thing Ray did that was really nice was the talk about all of the different stakeholders that have something to do with the buildings and with uh, both government and private who are, you know, have. So ownership in the buildings mm -hmm. or interest in the buildings and then grants and it's really complicated. It is a very complicated and I think what people are going to have to realize on that committee is things aren't going to happen quickly. Like some no. of the other committees, we'll, we'll talk to Laurel in a minute and yeah. things are happening like boom, 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 boom. But with the task force for the um, building redevelopment, it's a much bigger picture. Yeah, and it's, and it's also one of the, I guess, I would think one of the keystone projects much, really yeah. because it's yeah. it it will make a long term difference in, exactly in, um, exactly and it's part of and it, and it ideally should be um, developed kind of with the town plan yeah oh so yeah that's another thing that came up is that, so. that whole coordination with the town plan yeah. so um, the other in the in other action the um, youth group has set their meeting time and date they're going to be uh, meeting on the nineteenth 
at Parts Place at 5.30, and that's the uh, Build a Youth Center group. And then the subcommittees of the um, Energy Efficiency and Resiliency team met this week. We haven't gotten any word yet, but they're going to meet uh, on the 19th, actually in this very room, in the secret bunker, and we're going to uh, talk about what the subcommittees did and, and get, get some actions forward. But in the meantime, we can introduce you to Laurel Green. Um, she's our interview this week, and she is the Energy Efficiency and Resiliency Committee Chair. All right. So well, let's go to that clip. clip. Hi, community. Welcome to Take Action Rockingham Committee Chair Interviews. Today I'm here with Laurel Green, who is the Committee Chair for the Energy Efficiency and Resiliency Committee. Welcome. Thank you. Glad That's to be here. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Laurel. Well, um, I am, have decided to put all of my time and energy towards making this town a really welcoming, happy, caring place. And so the whole work about resilience is right around that. Perfect. How did you, like, how, what is your, do you have a background in that kind of, in this, or is this new to you, or do you have a background um, in this? Well, it really comes out of my care of the environment work, and that when people care about the place they live in, care about the people, that adds up to resilience. So that's just trying to build all those connections and help everyone feel welcome here. Awesome. What is your, um, do you, do you, what do you practice for energy efficiency and resilience? Well, we're um, a number of things. I walked here today for the interview. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the middle, my partner and I are in the middle of doing a deep energy retrofit on a house that was built in the 1880s in Bellows Falls mm -hmm. and hope to bring it as close to a net zero house where we create as much energy as we use. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big challenge. Um, we set up carpools and ride our bikes and try to use energy efficiency that way and um, collaboration. Um, I've been a gardener all my life and really care about composting mm -hmm. and um, growing as much of my own food as possible. So there's a lot of pieces that are So all of that. these things that you've mentioned are actually things that are, I believe, part of the action plan for the Energy Resiliency and um, Efficiency Committee. And they're all simple things that people are going to be able to do. Right. So tell us about some of the action. You've had one meeting, correct? Right. We had one meeting about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and 20 people came um, full of energy and ready to work, really interested awesome. in, in doing this. And I give a lot of credit to the Vermont Council on Rural Development meetings, community meetings that we had over mm -hmm. the winter. Um, people just came out of the woodwork, really yeah. wanting to make the town work well for everyone. It was awesome, yeah. Yeah. So I um, feel like we've just taken that energy and um, we're kind of going with that. Um, at that meeting, I talked about resilience um, in the meetings with VCRD. Mm -hmm. We had not really talked about that much. And Can you be back up a little bit and kind of talk about what, what do you mean when you say resilience? Okay, great, great question. And that was something I wanted to be sure to talk about today because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really know what that word yeah. means. Why did it get stuck in the title? <laughs> Um, and I, th I feel like it's the key word. Uh, resilience is a really big umbrella that covers a lot. For a person to be resilient, it means that you can bounce back when they, you have problems in your life. Whatever difficulty is, if you have resilience built in, you can bounce back. Mm -hmm. So for a person, those are things like having friends, having a home that um, keeps you warm and safe, having um, transportation to get where you need to go, and having some way to be of use in the community. For some people, that's their paid work. For some people, that's volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, there's a wide range of um, ways to build that resilience around yourself, but it's about being in the network of life. Mm -hmm. And for a community to have resilience, it's kind of the same things. It's making sure that everyone has a network of friends, that everyone has a home that's safe and warm and um, durable, um, that everyone has access to transportation, whether that's good sidewalks so we can walk safely, bike lanes, um, the bus system that's usable and comes and goes when we need to have the bus, the train, we're in a really lucky place because mm -hmm. we have a daily train. 
um, and I hear possibly that might increase in the future. And cars, we've got cars, our society is set up to run with cars, although it's really a big polluter and a drain mm -hmm. on our economy. Um, but we're set up that way, so doing car sharing and carpooling and moving towards electric vehicles for those who can, um, and certainly people, uh, businesses that have a whole carpool, how, what do you call it, um, a whole bunch of that cars, yep. yeah, to have move those towards electric is really great. So those are the kinds of things, um, so home, friends, transportation, oh, and work, you know, a viable economy for mm -hmm. a community makes it so when bad things happen to us, difficult things happen, the community can bounce back. So um, part of the resilience planning from the town manager's point of view, mm -hmm. from the police and fire department's point of view, is about how do we deal with fires and floods, ice storms, mm -hmm. ice jams in the river, um, heavy wind storms that knock out our power. How do we deal with those? But resilience for our community means a lot more. It means localizing our food, knowing how our water is, where it comes from, mm -hmm. how it's taken care of so that we can use it, and what happens when we're done using it. How do we help with all of the, all the parts that we need? Communication system. Having a local TV is really great because it helps with that communication. So those are all things we need to build a resilient and to strengthen the resilience in our community that we already have. Nice. So resiliency, so th what this committee is doing, not only being resilient for the town, but what I'm hearing is it's creating resilience for the individuals that are coming to the committee because they're getting all of those needs kind of met as well. So it's kind of a twofold, twofold group, well, which is kind of cool. I like think of it in layers. Yeah. So yeah, if my life if I can build resiliency in my life and I can extend that to my family and my neighborhood mm -hmm. and my neighborhood can connect to the next one and our, you know, we kind of mm -hmm. build out that way, you know, you can sort of ripple out to include the whole world, you know, if you can open your heart and mind that big. Nice. Um, it would be good to have our whole world really resilient at this time. That's awesome. That's a great explanation of resiliency. So I hope you're listening out there, community. <laughs> <laughs> so you had asked me about the um, subgroups, right. the teams that, that um, our group decided to divide mm -hmm. up in. I sort of had in mind to narrow the possibilities so we could focus on one or two clear projects mm -hmm. so we could have a good win, you know, so we can right. say, yes, we've done this, and now we can look at a bigger project. But um, 20 smart adults in a room <laughs> that have their own ideas decided that we wanted to split into four working groups, four teams. There's one on transportation, um, weatherization, um, I know these. Composting? Co gardens, yeah. composting and swales are kind of grouped together, and renewable energy. Yes. And so the Renewable Energy Group already met together with the Energy Committee, that's official town mm -hmm. committee, part of the, a subset of the uh, Conservation Commission. And they may be working together, it looks like. We don't want to duplicate things that are already right, happening, right. but there could be a good collaboration mm -hmm. there. Um, and I know that this week the Transportation Committee is going to be um, going to the public comment part of the... Connecticut uh, River CRT River Transport mm -hmm. the the current at the current the office current. on 103 they're going to meet there and then following that they're going to have a meeting about what projects they want to take on nice. um, the weatherization group is meeting this week thinking about the window dresser project which is building um, basically storm inserts that go inside your house it's a double pane plastic that's reusable from year to year and thinking about having a community event to build these and, oh, that's a great idea. and make them happen. It really helps warm up cold, drafty windows. And a simple fix. It's a fairly, it's a band-aid. It's not yeah. the whole fix, yeah. but it really helps with the energy efficiency. It's, it's they're remarkable. Um, so weatherization, transportation, the renewable energy folks are thinking big about community solar and wanting to see what can happen in town about connecting particularly like the schools and, mm -hmm. and already some of the municipal buildings are part of um, uh, community solar net metering 
project, which helps reduce our expenses, which we're always looking to do that. Oh, that's definitely, <laughs> it's, it's on, in my wheelhouse. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's on the list. It's on the list. Um, and then with the gardens, we're collaborating with the community garden folks, um, reaching out to the master gardeners in the area um, to develop not only a, a well, there's, they need more people in the community garden. Mm -hmm. There's spaces available, wanting to use that as a place for teaching people to do basic gardening, mm -hmm. food gardening. But also with the new um, law that's coming to effect at the beginning of July, we um, are all going to need to be thinking about our food waste because we have to lim limit that. Um, which is great. It's a good direction for the environment. It's, it's really essential. Food waste is one of the high emitters of methane, which is one of the worst mm -hmm. um, greenhouse gases. So by reducing, for many people, you'll find you reduce your trash in half if you get your food scraps to the bin at the transfer station or if you take part in a neighborhood composting or do composting mm -hmm. in your own home. And the group, the team is looking at I'm hoping we'll be looking at setting up neighborhood composting where people who are already good at it can work together with people who want to learn and oh, nice. that's, and, a, good, that's um, a good I think people are kind of nervous about the whole composting they don't really understand it yeah so I think that's a, a great simple start yeah. is, is to teach people yeah and I know that the library has already set up a, a, a workshop with somebody who's a master composter who also works for the uh, solid waste district oh, in May. Good. So Perfect. giving people a chance to learn those skills ahead of the July 1st deadline. <laughs> That's a good thing because yeah. like I said I've heard a lot of people they just don't understand it. They think oh I'm not going to I'm not going to do this is what I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's and not that, that hard. hard. It's not that hard. It's people. not that hard. And for I know that some people have asked me who um, are renters. How does it work mm -hmm. for me? I'm in a building with a lot of people and I don't have a car. How do I get to the transfer station? And actually there's a state law that requires landlords who may not know this mm -hmm. to have a way for people to deposit their food scraps there in the rental building and then the landlord is responsible for having those taken to the transfer station. Wow, so you have so. a lot of things. A lot of really, like I think, practical things and things that can come to fruition very quickly yeah. with your um, energy efficiency and resiliency. Yeah. So you guys, you guys have got your efficiency down pat. <laughs> I'm saying, I, we had the first meeting of our committee last night and we're not quite there yet. But, um, but so it's a bigger project. It's a, yeah, the, yeah. You went to the building. The building right? one, that's, yeah. that's a slightly bigger project. But yeah. we will eventually be tying, I think, all of our projects together because I think all the groups will work together. So let's let the community know when your next meeting is. Okay. Um, so all of the subcommittees are going to come back together on March 19th, okay. 6.30 to 8 in the health center, lower conference room, fireplace room, this yeah. room. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that'll be a time for each of those groups to report back on what they've done. Um, I'm also instigating a, a Earth Day celebration. It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Oh, awesome. And so we're going to be talking some about that. If people have ideas of activities, I'm hoping to get people out and about in town, learning about our natural environment and how our town works. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. We know we'll have you back again, hopefully during a composting demonstration. That would be great. Can't wait to do that. So if you're interested in the Energy Committee meeting, it is March 19th, 6.30 to 8 p.m., right here in the Grass Fireplace Lounge Room. Thank you so thank much. You. Wow, that was a great. that was a great clip. That was. She was really good. Well, she yeah. well-spoken and prepared. Uh -huh. um, and efficient. Yeah. And efficient. She has that efficiency <laughs> thing down. That's what did you think of resiliency? I was. It, that was the one. That was the one question that I was like most intrigued about finding out the answer to was resiliency. And having listening listening to what she said, I was thinking this morning, a mm -hmm. couple days later, with everything with the COVID virus happening, how apropos. Yeah. That you want to have. You want to work on the resiliency of your community. Should some major thing happen, how are you going to handle it and how are you going to be self-sufficient? Yeah, yeah. Well, there are these groups in Vermont called Community Resiliency Organizations mm -hmm. that started right after uh, Irene. Oh, that makes sense. And sort of when we, when um, the, this group got together and started talking about resiliency, they were thinking about climate change. Mm -hmm. And now, but holy cow, this, I think now this virus more, is just... I, I think that while the, while the virus is, is indeed an unbelievably crazy bad thing, 
perhaps there could be some good that would come out of it and communities would look more at their own resiliency, community gardens, and how does neighbor help neighbor, um, those type, when disasters happen. We, we really can't always rely on the government to help us. We yeah. have to help ourselves. So that's, think, that's become I really think, apparent. I think that? resiliency is, is as about as important as it could be right now. Yeah. Just saying. And um, it's interesting about, well, I, I'm sort of looking at the different groups that we have now of how they're coming together and how they're working as far as, because we, as we talked before the, the clip about the how long term mm -hmm. the, the building thing. So if you are interested in doing something, think about how you work and what you like as far as working on a committee or working in the community or even doing things around your house. What do you like to do? Are you a short term, I want to get this done in 10 minutes person? Or are you a, well, I'm doing a strategic plan in my house and I'm going to, you know, I'm thinking 10 years ahead. Yeah, and I think that's the difference between how these committees are going to work and who's going to be best served for the committees and who's going to be, how the committee is going to best serve you in the community. Yeah. Is thinking about those two things because energy efficiency and resiliency is like moving right along. They are, yeah. Project. And, so and, like and some of the stuff has to be done quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this. The whole composting mm -hmm. thing takes effect in, in January, or July, July. excuse me, yep. not January. And um, people are going to have to be doing something by then. So that they're getting ahead and starting right now. And also this weatherization idea they have so that next winter people okay. will have some, some things to do. And if you like more of the visionary aspect of it and kind of like, you know, digging your heels in and, and lots of research and pulling this thread and this thread and this thread together to have this one thing at the end, then I think the take the, the building development group would be for you. And if you really, in, you know, want to empower our youth and have something that's lasting for, you know, for generations, yeah. then I think you want to join the, the build build a youth center or I, or I keep saying build but I think we should call it develop a youth center yeah not I set. agree we develop is, is such a much better we learned that team. Haley's not set on building a yeah, building yeah, yeah. so um, how would people find out if they want to join a committee Mike if they want to have um, information on the committees when they're meeting and stuff stay tuned right after we get done here there's going to be a, a we have a little credit roll sort of idea going that gives you the the committees, the where they're meeting, who's in charge of them and how to contact them. Perfect. So who's what's happened up what's next week? Do we know? We don't oh we have Ray Masuko next week. Yeah, no, all we right. Actually got so, a schedule. We were able to actually get a scheduled meeting with Ray Masuko. Yeah. That, so, that's an accomplishment right there. It is there. an accomplishment. <laughs> he's got a crazy busy schedule. All right. Ray is gonna carve out a little time for us. In the meantime we need you all to take, take action, action Rockingham. Yeah. something that all of the committees could use um, that you could easily donate so let's tell them what it is Laurel okay well we were getting ready for our first meeting and I realized <clears throat> there are no funds that came with setting up the task force so we could use flip chart markers post-its pens pe you know any kind of um, meeting kind of supplies would be really useful so if you have that let us know great thanks community thank you mm -hmm.